Hello, my name is Daron Marcus, and I am the director of the San Mateo County STEM Fair. If you're watching this video, and I know that you are, you have graciously agreed to be a judge in this year's STEM Fair. On behalf of the San Mateo County Office of Education, the STEM Center team, and all of us on the STEM Fair Committee, I would like to thank you for dedicating your valuable time and expertise during this important event. This year, over 400 students from around the county will be entering a project in the STEM Fair. It's our biggest fair yet. These students have worked hard on their projects for most of the school year in preparation for this event. As a judge, you will be using your knowledge and experience to score these students' projects with the specific goal of determining which projects will receive awards and who will earn a space in the San Francisco Bay Area Science Fair and or the California State Science Fair. If you have volunteered as a judge in the past, most of the information in this video will be somewhat familiar to you. But as several items have changed this year, I ask that you pay close attention to this short video. It would be great if you could either print out the related material or have the file open in a different window alongside it as you watch this video. The better informed you are prior to the STEM fair, the more efficiently you'll be able to perform your duties as a judge. You will be playing a crucial role in the success of our STEM fair and in the future of our students who are interested in science, engineering, mathematics, and computer science. Please don't take this role lightly. Being a judge is not easy, but it is extremely rewarding. For many students, you are the first professional that they have ever met in the field that they are showing interest. In fact, you should consider yourself an ambassador of your profession, in addition to someone who is here to judge students' projects. For that reason, it's important that you approach your role as more than someone who will be scoring a project based on its content, quality, and creativity. You are the connection between a student's ideas and the real world. Your interaction with the student and the types of feedback that you provide may serve as the foundation for the student's interest in the STEM fields and their future career. Just think. You may be part of the reason why a student chooses to become an engineer, a biochemist, or a programmer. That's very exciting. There are certain characteristics that a STEM fair judge must possess in order to be a great STEM fair judge. First and foremost, you must be fair. You should do your best to approach and treat every student participant in the very same way. For example, you should spend roughly the same amount of time at each project board and with each student during the interview stage. You should listen to each student's explanation of the project, even if the work is obvious to you. Remember, the types of questions that you ask should be with the intention of finding out more about how the project was done. Second, you should be as objective as possible. Base your score on the quality of work, not according to a proverbial high bar that you may have inadvertently set. Higher scores should go to projects that make breakthroughs, that correctly interpret data, that have a clever experimental apparatus, that predict experimental results with analytic techniques, and that clearly portray the ex and explain the project and its results. A great STEM fair judge is inquisitive. So your best tool in your judging is your ability to ask questions. Be sensitive to what the students know. Remember, you can always ask questions that the student can answer and keep the conversation going that way. This is not about stumping a student. This is about finding out if the student understands what she or he did and why. Finally, be supportive. Make eye contact. Indicate interest with body language. Be complimentary when appropriate, and use a tone of voice that conveys interest, not skepticism. This year, you will be using two forms to judge students' projects. The first form is the judging criteria sheet. This sheet will be colored and laminated, and will be reused for every project that you judge. 
You will use this sheet as a source for the criteria you will use to judge a project. As you can see, you will be judging each project based on four categories. Project Board, Scientific Thought Content and Organization, Creativity, Originality, and Skill Level, and the Interview. At most, you can award in each category for a total score of 40 points. At this time, please pause your video to review this sheet. If you wish, play soft jazz or contemporary music in the background as you read. I'll wait. Thanks for having me back. The other resource that we'll use to judge students' projects is the Project Judging Sheet. You will use one side of this sheet to mark the scores for eight different projects. As you can see, all you need to do is enter the project ID number, a few words from the project title, the scores for the four categories, and the total score. You do not have to rank your projects. That's what the super judge will be doing once you have submitted this sheet. Again, please feel free to continue your playback of your musical accompaniment while taking a moment to review this sheet. Again, I will wait until you're ready. As I noted earlier, the fourth category for project scoring is the interview. The interview is a very important part of this judging process, as this is when students will have an opportunity to answer your questions, discuss their procedures, rationalize their experimental design, and discuss with you their conclusions amongst many other potential topics. This is not a time for you to demonstrate your knowledge and what you would have done if you were in their position. This is a time for you to listen and learn more about the project that you are judging. The types of questions that you ask are crucial. Here's a list of questions that you can ask that will help facilitate a discussion between you and the student participant. Where did you get this idea? What was the hardest part? What would you do next? What were your dependent and independent variables and your control? What would you do differently next time? What research did you do? Why are your findings important? Why did you do the experiment more than once? What did you base your conclusions on? And who helped you? Remember the list of great judge characteristics? Well, here's your time to be that fair, objective, inquisitive, and supportive person that you are. Your conversation with the student should resemble a discussion with an esteemed colleague who is having difficulty with some research. Together, you talk through the situation to mutually arrive at improved answers. Remember, the student should be doing most of the talking. You should coax or coach the student into realizing and describing the correct conclusions. Finally, this year's judges will have the option to provide direct feedback to students about their projects. We will be distributing project feedback forms for you to fill out after you have completed the judging phase for a project. This form will have only two questions on it. What did you like about this project? And where do you find room for this project to improve? There is also a space for extra comments if you wish to make some. You're not required to fill out a form for each project that you judge, but as someone who is interested in helping further the education of our students, I would strongly encourage you to do so. As all good teachers know, effective learning can only take place when accompanied by timely, meaningful feedback. Please visit our beautiful website, www.stemfair.net, for details related to dates and times for this year's STEM Fair. As parking is limited, I strongly encourage you to carpool or use public transportation. That said, we will do everything in our power to make the parking experience as painless as possible. That said, the earlier you get to the venue, the easier it will be for you to find a parking spot, so you may want to consider coming for the pre-judging period. That time is set aside for you to visit the projects that you will be judging, looking at them carefully, and doing as much scoring as you can before the students arrive for the official judging period. Dinner will be served, of course. Although the most obvious reason for volunteering to be a judge at the STEM Fair is to assist in the selection of the projects that get prizes, a great judge knows that you are here to ensure that the STEM Fair is a special experience in the life of every participant. 
please do your best to make sure that all of the participants remember the STEM Fair as a positive experience in their lives. Again, thank you for volunteering your time to judge our students' projects. I look forward to meeting you at the STEM Fair. You may now play your music again. Please fade the music out as I end this presentation. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.